Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, and thanks for bearing with me. Uh, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world how to empower animals and the people that care for them, and we do that through our live streaming services, which you can find on our website at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, so we usually live stream every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Um, this week we had to change it and just bear with me um, because we're working on a project now that is occupying more of our time every morning um, and will for probably a couple of weeks. So bear with me. Otherwise, then we'll switch back to 9.30. Um, but this is a fun project. And... Um, Let's see, what else do I need to say? Um, also, for those that are new, um, the work that we do here is we empower animals and the people that care for them. And we do that through teaching the understanding, the science of behavior, applied behavior analysis using B.F. Skinner's laws of behavior. Um, I've got a lot we've been working on and I'm going to show you. And also today is a Q&A. Um, so if you have your questions on animal behavior training enrichment, um, bring them on. You can also always contact me at Laura, L-A-R-A, at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, so good morning, everybody. We got Lisa, Kimberly, Katie, Bobby, Megan. Good to see you. Melinda, Eva, Tim, Jen. Ray, and the list keeps growing. Um, so let me just get started on some of the things that we've been working on. Um, also, for those that may be new, um, you can follow us on Instagram, on, I don't even know where we're on, Facebook. Uh, we are on LinkedIn as well. Uh, but I'm very active on Facebook, and this is where I do my live streams. This is where I do a lot of the posts. Um, you can take a look at our events where we post um, whether we're doing something. What is that noise? Whether we're doing something virtually or in person. And Lindsay Douglas and I will be gone next weekend because we're working on a project um, outside of here. Also. Um, you can keep up with what we do on by signing up for our email newsletter list. And you can find that right here on our Facebook page. Good morning, Mary. I was going to email you. Um, I need to get in touch with you about something. And Lynn, good morning, everybody. Does anybody have questions? Because I'm going to go ahead and talk about, do a recap of what we've been working on this past week. A lot. A lot. Um, I'm putting together some more virtual presentations for people who are asking for them. I'm working on a webinar. Um, we're doing some in-house training. Uh, but last week, why is that showing up like that? Last week, I was contacted by Carly Capone. And I've been um, working with Carly for, she reminded me, it's been about 10 years Um she contacted me 10 years ago about her pig, Poppy, which some of you that may have watched some of our um, pig webinars, you've seen her pig, Poppy, in there. And we've been in touch ever since um, in regards to animal behavior. And she has since started her own nonprofit. Um, I'd have to look up her text, but I want to say it's right there on her shirt, the homesteadohio.org. So check out her website. Um, also, when she came to visit, she'd never seen the center before. She never saw the center before this. She never saw this center. So um, I gave her a little mini avian encounter and said, have you ever held, ever had a raptor on your glove? And she's like, no. And I said, well, let's go. And that made her day. So Carly, it was good to see you. Um, I want to get in touch with her and maybe bring her on for a guest as a live stream. Um, also, I've been doing a lot of alligator training, but, and I have mentioned this publicly, 
um, one of the gators were using training for physical therapy. One of the gator gators was injured over the winter. Um, so I'm using her target training as physical therapy. Um, she knows to, when she touches her nose to that target, she then opens her mouth. Boom. As soon as she touches her nose, a bridge, she opens her mouth and goes the food. So we're getting her to use her front left leg and getting it mobile and her up and walking again through using that target. Um, good morning, Ron. And yesterday, yesterday and the day before, I was able to pull her out of the pond, ask her to come out of the pond and walk her around her whole enclosure as part of her physical therapy for the day. And she's doing fabulous. Um, a couple other things. Let's see. Um, those of you that are familiar with the work that we do, Lindsay, Lindsay Douglas is an employee here at the Animal Behavior Center. She has recently graduated with her bachelor's in applied behavior analysis, and she is one of the first in the class where she went to school um, showing how all of her projects that she had to work on were animal related. And uh, I know some of her professors questioned her like, why are you, how are you using this with animals? Hmm. So anyways, Lindsay um, opened their eyes, all the professors eyes of the use of ABA with animals. And um, at the end, when she graduated, they even complimented her and thanked her for opening their eyes for um, the use of ABA with animals. So you guys see in a lot of my live streams, Lindsay's right by my side. When I need help on something, boom, I ask Lindsay because Lindsay's been a volunteer for over five years, an employee for hmm, over a year. Um, so I've taken her along the way, teaching her a lot of what I know in the application because you can be as book smart as you want, but application is key. And I have seen plenty of people who are brilliant, brilliantly book smart with ABA, but when it comes to the application, they stumble. Um, and all that means is put it to use. You'll fine tune your skills and your animals will thank you for that. So congratulations, Lindsay Douglas. Um, some a couple other things that happened this week um, before I get into this last one. Oops, I don't want to cancel. Um, has anybody, hey, Debbie, didn't I just see you? Has anybody, um, oh, does anybody have any questions? Darn it, keep saying it. Do I want to cancel? No, I don't. Uh, one last thing I want to touch on what we did this past week. Um, those of you that follow the work that we do, Maddie Baugh is an intern from the um, University of Finley. It's a pre-vet school. Um, so her counselors came here this past week and they wanted to see what she was doing. And I was like, I like that. Keep us on our toes. So they wanted to see, and we didn't know for sure exactly what exactly they were coming in. So I was like, you ready, Maddie? And she's like, I'm ready because Maddie's put to work every single day. So Maddie's learning about ABA and how to use it to teach new behaviors. Um, primarily, she's learning how to use it to teach new behaviors, but I'm starting to get in, just starting to touch on with her um, how to use it in modifying behaviors, changing behaviors. Um, she's also here learning about enrichment and the importance of enrichment. So here in this photo, she is showing <laughs> um, the counselors how we keep track of food that is being fed, what time, how much, um, specifics to which animal and why. Uh, because if we start seeing a change in behavior, food is only one of many reinforcers but it's an easy reinforcer to work with. So one of the things we can do is like, hmm, this behavior's changed. 
I wonder why. And as we start to experiment with the environment to see what has changed, one of the first things we'll do is go to the food chart and say, are they getting enough of this? Are they getting enough of this? Is this too low? When is the last time this been introduced? Is this too predictable? Um, so here she's shown her counselors how we um, track food and keep weights on animals. And then we took them into the other room and showed um, she got them out or she got um, the Eurasian Eagle Owl out and showed how we train her to fly to the glove um, because when the owl is out, she needs to either be on her perch or on our glove um, for the safety of everything in that room. And this is in our enrichment room. So she did that um, fabulously. And the counselors were very impressed. And the last thing I see, Jen, you got a question. This is my last photo. Um, after we introduced Maddie to some of the enrichment here, we're showing her how to build complexities for an array of different species of animals. Most of the species of animals we keep at the center are birds. Uh, but what we work with every day are numerous. Um, so I gave Maddie a task to do before the end of her internship, which is to teach the hyacinth macaws to ex willingly want to take an aversive tasting medication without the use of force. So that is her assignment. And by the end of her internship, she's going to have to show me how she's put this all together. And of course, I will be here with her for guidance along the way. Jennifer Hirakawa. Um, let me know if you want to come on, Jen. I've only got 10 more minutes and I have to go because I have something happening right after this. Um, let me know if you want to come on as a guest. If not, go ahead and shoot your question on Deco. Okay. Okay. Sure. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to copy this link and then I'm going to run over to Facebook and I'm logging into Facebook right now. And while I'm waiting on Jen, type in her name, then I'm going to address Kimberly's Jennifer Hirakawa. Why are you not showing up? Maybe you're just Jen. There you are. Um, so Jen, I'm sending you this link in a message right now. There you go. So yell at me when you're on Jen. Um, so now I'm going to address Kimberly's question. When it comes to introducing a new member of the flock, would you say to use D and disc and boy, this is such a membership question, Kimberly, because some people are going to be like, what the hell is she talking about? These are things we talk about in our level one, level two membership in the parrot project. Would you say to use D and disc and pair the animals with that preferred reinforcer? You're talking about pairing the new animal with that. Um, that's my plan. Just wondering your thoughts. Uh, yep, that would definitely be one. That would definitely be one. Um, I would also focus on the other three of those too. Deprivation, immediacy, size, contingency. Um, but deprivation, the more an animal is deprived of a positive reinforcer, the higher value that reinforcer has, then you can then you can pair that with um, what you're training or trying to introduce. Jennifer, I'm coming on here to look for you. Okay. Every time I scroll to the left, oh, I'm scrolling on the wrong spot. Um, so something else you could do, Kimberly, is a lot of observation, a lot of sitting and watching um, how the new animal is interacting, what it's moving towards, what it's moving away from, what the other animals, how they are reacting. Um, Jennifer, I'm not seeing you in here at all. I'm not seeing you in the lobby. Why would that be? Let me create a new link real quick, Jen. Create new link. 
Okay, Jennifer, I'm going to send you a new link. Sorry. There you go. Um, so does that make sense, Kimberly? Uh, and when I'm introducing a new animal, we were just talking about that this morning in the Parrot Project. When I'm introducing a new animal, um, I always expect it to upset the apple cart, apple cart and just know that you're going to have to kind of ebb and flow with those changes and the animals will hopefully, um, with time get comfortable with what you are training and the new animal. Jennifer, I'm trying to find you in stream. Um, But yeah, and I often say to use the D and disc, especially when you're working with an animal that's showing any type of signs of anxiety, of pre preference of being with one person um, or even um, resource guards. Okay, Jennifer, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. If you want to go ahead and ask your question, hopefully I understand it. Um, So especially when an animal is over bonded to one person, um, I definitely use the D and disc to show and place value on the other people. That way, and it's all about balance. Once you start pairing the unpreferred people with the higher valued reinforcers and you're using the D and disc, meaning deprivation opposite of satiation so the longer the animal is deprived of hot dogs as treats and then it's paired with the, the person that it doesn't prefer um and have that person just be the delivery of that higher valued reinforcer then the animal starts having a reason to look forward to that person coming because that person is now a conditioned reinforcer, meaning it's paired with a highly valued primary reinforcer and the appearance of that person becomes a cue. Um, also ask that in the parrot project, um, Kimberly. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm going on next to no sleep for the past week for numerous diff different reasons. And, um, just have a lot going on and I've got a lot coming up within the next three weeks that is taking a lot of my focus and attention, um, some of which will be a very valuable to you um, or the appearance of the new bird. That's correct, Kimberly. Are you getting a new bird? Let me know. Um, okay, so for those of you in level one and level two, I have uploaded your latest podcast. And it is on, I can't remember the title. I recorded it last week. Can we really get away from using negative reinforcement? Um, and I know we have a marketing live stream coming up in level two. I'm going to try to schedule that for this week. And then the following week, I'm going to have all the Q and A's in the Parrot Project, level one, level two. Um, so pay attention to those. So Jen says, so I have a client whose dog has bitten another human. Um, the dog had to be removed from her home. She is moving and has sent the dog to me to board and has brought in a trainer. Huh. Why wouldn't she hire you as the trainer? That has come to my place one time now, stating that she is not training the dog, but doing decompression for the dog. I guess I would want to know what decompression, what is she talking about? Because Jennifer, okay, and Jennifer says, I'll be honest, I like decompression work. I think it's valuable. So when you're talking about decompression work, are you talking about bringing the dog, making sure the dog is under threshold? Um, I think it's valuable, but I didn't see her doing any type of actual training. And this is what, 
Okay, Jen says, that's exactly my, my point. Decompression consists of a walk with sniffs, play in a very calm manner. Okay. Um, okay, so she is just pretty much observing the dog. Um, she's not having any type of verbal interaction with the dog. Because my concern would be, not concern, is that if that dog can see, hear, smell, or feel you, you're training it. I guess I would just want to know more. And Jen, we're going to have um, another live stream coming up in level two, a Q&A. We'll have a live stream this upcoming week on marketing in the following week on like a group discussion. You think that she's over her head. My concern with this is that if she's over her head, this is not a case to be over your head with you know a dog that now has a bite history on a person um oh and she didn't realize who she who you were oh that's a big mistake <laughs> but jennifer maybe bring this up in level two as well um so yeah i guess my concern would be that she's working on a dog with a bite history now and whatever she does or doesn't think she's doing is going to have an effect, either desirable or undesirable, on what happens next next with that dog. And thought she could pull a fast one on the owner. Hmm. Yep. So the owner is coming today, and I am going to show her the video. Oh, interesting. Let us know how that works. And Jennifer, maybe bring this up in level two, because I'd like to talk about this. Okay, with that being said, guys, I'm going to have to run. Um, we've got something we're working on happening right after this. So take a look at our website for our level one, level two memberships. Um, you'll see they are um, consist of our live stream training, um, live stream Q&As, activities, projects, free webinars, and we also have our projects, which are species specific. You can find those on our website as well. And in addition, you can find our webinars um, and much more that we offer. Um, we have been working with the dog for a month now. You are very welcome. Oh, what, Jen? You said, oh, wait, Laura, what? I'm waiting. Doopy doop. Jennifer has joined us this morning. Your friend that you told me you wanted to put me in touch with? Your veterinary friend? Hey, Therese. <laughs> you made it in time for the end. Um, yes. Okay. I, and Jen, um, here, Kawa, I just re friend requested Jennifer the other day. Hey, Jennifer. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Um, Jen Hirakawa talks highly of you. Uh, maybe you can shoot me a message or the three of us can have a group conversation. And who knows, Jennifer, maybe I can have you on as a guest because I have a lot of guests here on um, Coffee with the Critters. So, um, but usually our live streams are Sunday mornings from 9.30 to 10. I had to push this morning back to 10 because I have a project that I'm working on every morning starting at 6 a.m., that is setting off my schedule every morning for half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, but when we have guests on, uh, we usually start at 9 a.m. and give a complete hour. Um, so good deal. So both Jennifers, let me know if you guys want to get in touch with each other. But I got to run because I got some guests getting ready to walk in the front door that we've got to get some animals out moving around and getting ready for them to work with. All right, everybody. Um, have a great Father's Day. Have a great Sunday. And I will see you guys. Ugh. Hopefully next Sunday, I'm going to be out of town. So maybe I do some kind of live stream. I'll try to give you guys a heads up. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. Happy Father's Day.